everyone, and welcome back to Comic Book Issues. I'm your host, The Last Angry Geek. Now, if I could pick just one breakout character of the last decade, okay, it would probably be Deadpool, but if I could pick two, the second one would definitely be X-23, a.k.a. Laura Kinney, a female clone of Wolverine. X-23 was first introduced during the third season of a TV show, X-Men Evolution, created by writers Kyle Craig and Christopher Yost. The character was the first successful clone of Wolverine after 22 previous failures, hence X-23. She possessed two claws in each hand as well as a third that would protrude from her feet. The character proved so popular that she became a... canon immigrant. Thank you. And crossed over from the animated series into the regular comic books. The character first showed up in print in Joe Quesada's confusing, mind-boggling series, NYX, as a 14-year-old prostitute. Joe may be gone as editor-in-chief, but his legacy lives on. From there, she went on to star in two self-titled miniseries that explored her origins, and joined the X-Men for a brief time before disappearing. It was only when Yost and Craig took over writing the book New X-Men, featuring the latest crop of students at the Xavier Academy, that she was brought in to join this team. She clashed with fellow students, developed a crush on teammate Hellion, and even went to war with her creators at the mysterious facility. After New X-Men was cancelled, Yost and Craig started the new X-Force and brought Laura with them. Acting as part of Cyclops' hit team to eliminate threats to the mutant race, Laura found her niche. But in light of the heroic age, Cyclops disbanded X-Force, and her father figure, Wolverine, decided to keep her out of the new version so she would finally have a chance at being a normal person. Through this all, X-23 has been an emotionally distant member of these books, unable to really understand emotions as her creators treated her as little more than an animal. Laura's mother, the scientist who created her, as well as anyone else she was close to, was eliminated by the facility through the use of a trigger scent, a pheromone that would cause Laura to kill whomever she smelled it on. Thus, Laura enters into her first ongoing series, X-23, written by Marjorie Liu and drawn by Will Conrad. We're going to take a look at the very first three issues that tie into the Wolverine Goes to Hell mini-event, where Wolverine goes to hell and gets possessed by a violent killing machine. Uh, seems redundant to me, but what do I know? Issue 1 opens with Laura leading a pack of wolves as she tries to outrun a tidal wave of blood. She comes upon a briar patch where a red-eyed wolverine sits on a throne and offers her the chance to serve him. We see that the two are, apparently, in hell. Laura awakens on Utopia, the X-Men's island home, and finds her former new X-Men teammates having a campfire sing-along. Laura watches Hellion reject the help of a girl to eat after he lost his hands in the second coming event, but she doesn't join her friends. Instead, she seeks out Storm, who is mourning her dead friend Nightcrawler. Storm tries to bond with X over their crappy childhoods, but when Wolverine arrives, disturbed by her dream, X quickly departs. Meanwhile, Cyclops and Emma Frost discuss their failed attempts to integrate Laura into mutant society. Emma, who pushed her away for fear that her students would be harmed, and Scott, who compromised his principles to found X-Force. The next morning, Laura attempts to approach the other students and admits to Hellion that she's missed him. But the other students have mixed feelings towards her after her time killing people in X-Force. Surge points out that Laura's been lying to them, and she turned her back on the friends who would have stood by her if she'd turned Cyclops down when he asked her to join X-Force. Cyclops arrives and prevents the fight from going any further. He admits he feels bad for using Laura and gives her a new opportunity to stay in San Francisco and work with depowered mutants. He thinks this will aid X-23 in finding new ways to help people instead of rejecting society. However, as she enters the halfway house, she blacks out and awakens to find the building on fire. We cut to a flashback and see that Wolverine recently offered to adopt Laura before cutting back to the fire. She goes to rescue a man, but is stopped by a demon who tells her that her purpose is that of a killer, before turning to energy and seemingly possessing her. X tries to save the man who screams that she killed them all. Outside, with emergency services taking him away, X is comforted by Gambit of the X-Men before Storm arrives to tell Laura that Gasleek was to blame. But, haunted by the man's words, Laura retreats from contact. Cyclops arrives and Laura has another demonic vision as Wolverine arrives to watch over her. Laura tries to leave, but Logan grabs her. X realizes this is not Wolverine, and when confronted, Logan goes all wide-eyed. Realizing this is the demon from her nightmare, she stabs him just as Hellion enters the room. He grabs her with his telekinesis as Wolver Demon plays innocent. Laura tries to get Hellion to believe her, but it's too late. Wolverine stabs him from behind. The demon mocks her for not having a soul, since she's the clone of a killer, before making the traditional offer. Her marriage for her aunt's life. Oh, God. I thought I could do this, but it's too soon. <laughs> <laughs> 
Anyway, the demon offers X-23 Hellion's life for her soul. Laura accepts, and the demon takes her to hell. Flashing back to the conflicting messages she got from her mother, we then open issue 3 with X attacking demon wolves. Wolves that transform into Cyclops, who again taunts her with the idea that she's only a machine, a thing. The imagery of hell is strewn with dead bodies, cages, and puppets, all reflections of Laura's life, who is then confronted by a mysterious woman made out of starlight, who claims to be Laura's true self. The wolves attack this being until Laura fights them off. All that's left is one glowing moat that Laura takes a hold of. Laura flashes back to growing up in the facility and remembers the abuse she suffered that turned her into an emotionless killing machine. It's a lesson from her true self. She wasn't born a killer. She had to be turned into one. She was normal once and can to be again. She confronts the Wolverine demon who again tells her that no one can ever understand her. However, Laura no longer believes him and placing her hand on the demon burns him away. Laura awakens to find Gambit and Storm as well as a revived Hellion. On her palm, the one that grabbed her true self's energy and destroyed the demon, she now finds a strange mark. Storm, Gambit, Cyclops, and the White Queen all meet to discuss what happened with Laura. While Scott and Emma preach structure for Laura, Aurora votes that they give her freedom to let her find her own way. It's Gambit who points out that Laura now sees the X-Men as a prison, a group of people constantly trying to fix her. Sure enough, Laura steals into Hellion's room during the night, but can't bring herself to say anything to one person she has genuine feelings for. Laura is stopped by Storm as she tries to leave Utopia. Laura convinces Storm that she needs to be away from where everyone knows her better than she knows herself. Hopeful for a future where she might find the real person inside of her again, Laura walks down a street only to catch some very sinister attention. So that's the first story arc of X-23, running across the first three issues of the new ongoing series. Here's what I thought about it. First off, I did feel that Marjorie Liu, the book's writer, did an excellent job. She really seems to have an affinity for Laura and the other characters of the X-Men universe. I really did feel that Liu managed to find the character's voice. Whereas Wolverine is all about a man being consumed by his animalistic nature, X is the opposite. She's a girl who's so traumatized that she doesn't know how to be human, and that's what Lou explores in this book. How does someone turn on emotions? How do you go about becoming a human being? What hurts this book the most is launching this during a quote-unquote event. Tying it into the Wolverine Goes to Hell story forces the characters into events that don't really suit them. Even though X-23 went to limbo in the new X-Men book, I don't really feel like the character lends herself to a supernatural slant. Also, if you're not following Wolverine, are you going to understand that the Logan in this book is possessed until Laura points it out in the second issue? And the dark figure in the cage is allegedly some sort of psychic pedophile. I have no idea who that's supposed to be. Was this character in the book or a leftover storyline being dealt with? Also, the story, though well written, is an obvious means to an end. Separating Laura from the other mutants on Utopia so she can start her solo adventures. As for the art, I felt that Will Conrad did a competent job, but nothing about the art really jumped out at me. I felt he needed a little more pizzazz to his art, but that could just be my own personal taste. Also, and I'm not sure I'm saying this name right, I hated the covers by Danny Shiny A. Luo. He's drawing Laura as a smiling manga girl. Laura doesn't smile, and she just looks goofy on these covers. I like the writing, even though the settings of the book aren't necessarily right for the character, and the art is good, not great. However, despite its faults, I think the writing rises above its problems, and I think that future issues of X-23 are going to improve on the series. I give X-23 issues 1 through 3... Three out of five stars. Thanks for joining us, everyone. I'm The Last Angry Geek, and I'll see you here next time on Comic Book Issues.